Yes, I'm being 100% serious when I say that if you use this tool correctly, you can write fewer drafts of any screenplay. On average, I'd say three or four drafts less. Now the tool I'm talking about is Beat Sheets, which is a way of planning your story before you start writing. So it's not really an outline, but it's, it's an outline kind of a thing. I realize a lot of you wanna just jump into scripting, but the problem is when you do that, you don't even know if you have a story yet. You think you do, but you don't know for sure. In fact, many of you begin scripting to find the story, which is a huge obstacle to learning the craft of screenwriting because you don't find stories. You craft stories. So in just scripting without any planning, you're already heading down a frustrating road and you're making it harder on yourself to actually learn the craft of screenwriting. Plus, if you just jump into scripting, you don't even know who all your characters are yet, much less what their arcs are gonna be or who needs an arc and who doesn't. And what happens with writers who just start scripting without a solid plan for their story is their first draft is spent figuring out if they have a story. The second draft is in trying to hone the story into something that actually makes sense. The third draft is getting the story to actually make sense and begin some character work. The fourth draft is spent fixing your characters and you can skip all of that if you just craft a comprehensive beat sheet. And not only will you have a better story, you're gonna be saving yourself a ton of time. And so we're gonna talk about what a beat sheet is, what it looks like, and while I have usually done beat sheets on pieces of paper and big note cards, I had the opportunity to use Arc Studio Pro's outlining tools for a script I'm currently working on. So I'll show you my beat sheet for my current script within Arc Studio Pro and how I was able to do that. And if you're interested in trying Arc Studio for yourself, I'll give you some information about that too. So what is a beat sheet? Well, simply it is a detailed outline of the story beats and the character beats for any story. And you can kind of think of it like a big bullet item list for every story beat, and then you just start inserting all the character beats where they need to go. I was first introduced to beat sheets when I was in grad school taking a course on writing a spec TV script. Now in TV, if you watch a show on broadcast, there are commercial breaks, and each section of the actual show between those commercials is referred to an act, at least in TV. So it's not a structural act like I talk about a lot on this channel. In TV, acts are functional not structural. And each act in TV has between five to 10 scenes, usually seven to eight in normal shows, sometimes less. I've seen as few as three, sometimes a little more, but it's usually in that ballpark. And when planning the TV episode, you have to account for having strong act outs leading into commercial breaks. So the audience will wanna return and watch the story unfold in the next act. So there's usually a cliffhanger moment or a surprise revelation or similar kinds of things at the end of those acts in TV. But to plan out those act breaks, you have to plan out the whole act, which in turn means you have to plan out the whole story. And most TV shows only have 35 to 45 scenes, give or take. So you can't really wander around with your story. You don't have time. It's gotta be clean, it's gotta be tight, and you have to know where you're going. And to know where you're going, you create a beat sheet, which includes all of the story beats and then all of the needed character beats in one brief outline. But you can also do this for feature films. And in films, because there are no commercials, you break them down instead into sequences. And unlike TV, sequences are actually structural elements within a screenplay. And sequences typically consist of six to 12 scenes each. There can be more, there can be less, but often six to 12. The other thing about sequences is they are often between 12 to 15 minutes long. Whether there are six scenes or 12 scenes or however many scenes there are, it's usually about 12 to 15 minutes long. And because there are usually eight sequences in a film, the math breaks down like this. If each sequence is 12 minutes and you have eight sequences, that's 96 minutes. If each sequence is 15 minutes, that's eight sequences, that's 120 minutes. And most movies are between 90 and 120 minutes. So working in sequences not only helps you structure your film, it helps you break it down into smaller, manageable pieces. And this is one reason why many writers avoid doing outlines because outlines just seem so big and so unwieldy. I mean, you gotta do the whole thing from beginning to end and that's a lot. And a lot of writers just toss up their hands 
and they don't do it. And they end up writing way more drafts than they need to write because they didn't spend any time planning. But what a beat sheet does is it allows you to take your story and break it down into just seven or eight sequences, just kind of big swings. And then each sequence has six to 12 key story moments. And so you just work on one sequence at a time, six to 12 steps per sequence. And anyone can do six steps, 12 steps. That's, that's relatively easy in planning a story. And when you've done all eight sequences, well, now you have a planned out screenplay. And let me insert right Right here that if you aren't familiar with story structure and sequences I do have a couple of videos on this channel that talk about those things but I also have the complete guide to story structure which is linked below and that's a robust guide and I break down story and story structure and sequences and give you a bunch of examples and you should check that out if you think that would be of benefit to you and the easiest way to start doing a beat sheet is just to start by filling in and identifying the key moments of your story so you might choose to break things down by act one act two act three and then you have sequences in each usually two sequences in act one four in act two two in act three so you kind of start having a little bit of structure if you kind of know where some story things typically happen that's where you start putting things so the inciting incident well that goes in act one usually at the end of sequence one the decision to pursue the want well that's usually the end of act one or the end of sequence two and what's the character's life dream? Well, you just gotta communicate that somewhere in sequence one. Doesn't matter where, but it goes in sequence one. What does the character want? Well, that's what drives act two. So what's the thing that they're pursuing all through act two? And what are the three or four ways they try to get closer to achieving their want? And those are the big pieces of sequences three, four, five, and six. Four sequences, if they're doing four things, one per sequence. And then do they get it or not? That answer comes at the end of the second act or the end of sequence six. And you just start filling in what you know. And then you start filling in the blanks. You just take one sequence, six to 12 story beats in each sequence, and you fill that out until the protagonist is moving from the beginning to the end of the story. And the primary focus with a beat sheet is to make sure you have a solid story from beginning to end. Many writers screw this part up and start trying to dive into character too much and ignore the story or they ignore the character altogether which is a whole other problem because you don't know your protagonist's life dream which is their primary motivation for doing anything but as long as you know your protagonist's life dream what they ultimately want and you know their need what they need to learn it's fairly easy to start extrapolating the types of decisions that they're going to make to move the story along. And once you know that motivation, that's when you can really start drilling down. Now you can really start figuring out the six to 12 scenes or story beats or whatever, however you wanna call it, that makes sense to you, that get you from beginning to end of the story. And then, because you know the character's motivation, you're gonna start incorporating character beats and character moments. Here's an important decision the character's gonna make. And here's another place where the character needs to make an important decision. Now you may not necessarily be tying those character beats to specific story beats yet, but you're just getting them in there. You're just kind of like lopping them in buckets or barrels. Like here's this group, here's this group, here's this group. And once you get everything all in there, well now you can rearrange and now you can move them and put them in the order you want before you start scripting. But you kind of have to know what are the things that happen within each sequence? You gotta know those story beats and you gotta make sure that there's a good twist or reversal in each sequence, kind of like an act out in TV because it sends the story in a new direction and it's ultimately gonna help keep the audience engaged. Historically, I have tended to do this on large note cards and I have one sequence per note card and I list the story elements to move the protagonist to the end of that section on the note card and I'll also list all the character beats I need within that sequence and I put them all on the note card. And then when I'm done, I usually open up my screenwriting software and start putting things in. I just start transcribing the things on my sequence cards, my note cards into my screenwriting software and I start creating slug lines and I just add some information in. There's just kind of notes for me that has to occur 
in each location. But it's always a bit challenging once I get to this stage because it's hard to have a visualization of the entire story at this point. But screenwriting software being what it is, that's just what I've historically done. But as I was beginning a new script a few months ago, a screenwriting software company, Arc Studio, reached out to me and wanted to know if I'd be interested in trying their software and including my use of it in a few videos and giving my candid opinions of it along the way. And I knew that Arc Studio Pro had some outlining tools that other screenwriting software didn't have, and I was really curious about using it to craft a detailed digital beat sheet. So I said yes to Arc Studio. Now I am gonna do a full review of Arc Studio Pro in a future video, but after talking with them, we wanted to do something for you. So yes, I'm gonna show you my beat sheet for my current screenplay with an Arc Studio, but there is a link below for Arc Studio Pro if you like what you see and you're interested in using it. Now that link allows you, just like anyone else who goes to Arc Studio's website, to use Arc Studio Pro for free for seven days. But what it also allows you to do is if you decide to purchase Arc Studio Pro within your seven day trial, so within your seven days of free use, and you choose to use this link below, you're gonna get $30 off for the first year, which is a huge discount, it's a great deal, and it will give you access to the tools that I'm about to show you. With Arc Studio, you can work online, but I downloaded it to my computer because you can also download the app. And after giving, getting everything all set up, I opened up the plot board and I changed the organization because there's a default organization from acts to sequences because that's how I organize things a little simpler. Now there are structural templates that you can use that are preloaded. So you can choose from some other templates if you want, but I wanna make sure I have a complete story. So I'm gonna use a standard story template with sequences. Now for the screenplay that I'm working on, some of my sequences are hybrid sequences. I haven't really delved into that. It's a little more um, intricate. But what that simply means is just to kind of pare that down is there's two mini sequences that I put together. So when I first entered data for my note cards, I separated all of those into their own mini sequences. So 3A and 3B is really sequence three, but there's kind of two parts of that. So I organized it like that. And then I went through and put all of my story beats into their proper sequence. And notice here at the top of each sequence, I made a question. Now these questions help to focus the sequence on the specific elements that are moving the story forward and they follow a will the character do blank or will blank happen kind of pattern. That way, as I'm working on each sequence, I know what the big swing of that sequence is. And most screenwriting software allows you to create cards or something like note cards and give you some level of detail. But with Arc Studio, you can also add characters and storylines, so subplots, and assign each of those things colors that can help you visualize your story a little easier. And then you can assign those characters to specific story beats. So in this, colored dots represent each character that's in that specific scene. And you can assign storylines also to specific beats, which then color the beat along the left edge. So for my current movie, the main character is named Jane, who is colored green on this beat sheet. And the antagonist is Zoo, who is red. So you can see each of them in every scene. Like one of them is always in every scene because it's, it's really Jane's story, but I have some scenes where Zoo is driving those. And then my supporting characters also get colors and they're included as appropriate. But I can also rearrange the scenes and story beats just by dragging and dropping, which allows me to combine my hybrid mini sequences into bigger sequences once I know I have everything in the order I want. Now, what I'll show you in a second is that Arc Studio then takes this beat sheet and puts all of the beats in order within your script. So when I get to the writing of my script, I'll always know what the next scene is, what story, what character beats I need, and what scenes are coming next. Now I do have to give some full disclosure. There were a couple of hiccups for me along the way, but I'll show you my workarounds. And I'll also tell you that Arc Studio really wants the feedback. They wanna keep improving 
improving their software and I'm hopeful that they're going to be tweaking and fixing these minor issues going forward. But I did figure out a couple of workarounds for the issues that I was having. One issue was with the organizing of the larger chunks. Okay, so like the acts or the big sequences. Now you can't move any sequence to the beginning or the end of the board section, which was a little frustrating. You can move the first one somewhere else, you can move the last one somewhere else, but you can't move a new one into the beginning slot and you can't move something in the middle into the end slot. So what I did is I just simply made headers that were begin and end and let those be at the beginning and the end and I just left them alone and everything else I just had in the middle and then I was able to move things around like I wanted to. The other thing is while you can assign colors to storylines or subplots and you can assign colors to characters, there wasn't an easy way to visually note character beats. Okay, story beats are the cards, right? Those are the individual cards, but I wanted to also note visually character beats. So what I did for my workaround was because typically those character beats are only associated with a protagonist, maybe one other character, was I just created a new character called Jane Character Beat and assigned it a new color. In this case, a different color of green. So when there are other green colors on the plot board, I know those are important character beats for my main character. Personally, I'd love it if there was another color bar on the cart, maybe along the bottom or the right side where you can note character beats in a visual way, but I'm not sure if that's doable with the interface. And for me, my workaround actually worked just fine. The only other issue I had was just a slight interface problem, scrolling to the left or right. And that might've been because I was working on an older Mac, but I actually really loved folding my beat sheet, my cards, into the plot board within Arc Studio. And then when I was done, and when you get done, if you choose to do this, you can close the plot board and you get a comprehensive look within the script of all your beats, all in order that they were from the plot board. And you can then click the icon next to the heading or click on the navigation button to expand the menu and see all of the contents for each specific card, including the notes you made, the characters in the scene, the location if you've assigned one, Plus, you can see the colors within the script of the subplot that you've assigned to that card. And so now, with just the headings from the beat sheet, I have roughly five pages of script. I haven't even written anything. I've already got five pages. But I've got my entire screenplay locked and ready to go because I spent the time creating a detailed beat sheet. Now I just have to write it. So a beat sheet is helpful in planning out your story before you write a single word. And I know I went fast, I know I didn't get into the weeds, but I do go into the details and I help you work on an entire screenplay, giving you notes and feedback all along the way in my Screenplay Navigator coaching program. It's free to apply, but you do have to apply. I don't take everyone. But if you've written a screenplay or two and you know you love writing screenplays and you really wanna dive in and move toward writing scripts good enough to be submitted to people in the industry and have a legitimate shot at selling them, all while gaining confidence and experience in the craft. If that's you, okay, just book a free call to apply using the link below for the Screenplay Navigator. And again, if you wanna use Arc Studio Pro for free for seven days, and if you like it, get $30 off the price for the first year, there is an Arc Studio link below, right at the top, it's the top link. And so far, I'm having fun using Arc Studio. So if you wanna do it, click on that link, enjoy your use of Arc Studio. I will be reporting back about my experience writing my script because I'm gonna write the script in Arc Studio, so I'm gonna report back about that. And I'm gonna be doing a review of Arc Studio Pro down the road, so be looking for those. But if you want a good deal, Arc Studio link below. And also don't forget about all the other fun buttons that help others find this channel. And if you wanna learn more about sequences, you can watch this video right here. Thank you so much for watching, and when you decide to tell a story, Tell a story that matters. See you later.